Today on Night Banner, we're talking about access locks and other companies take on the access lock. Over to you, Kurt. Woo! Thanks, Kurt. Love the enthusiasm. You probably shouldn't do that to your knives, though. Let's talk knives. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another Knife Banner. Today, we are talking about Kurt. We're talking about axis locks. Oh my gosh, my favorite. We're talking about axis locks, but not just the axis lock, but other companies' variation of the axis lock. All right, so if you guys don't know, the axis lock patent expired a couple years ago, so you're starting to see some different manufacturers come out with their versions of the axis lock, and they usually name them something different, but uh, the same general design is the same. I actually love my axis lock. I carry one every single day without fail. It's in my pocket. Um, I there's, in my opinion, there's not a better lock. So I think there's something to be said about it being ambidextrous, it being incredibly fidgetable. I mean, <laughs> but judging by what you have on the table, you, uh, you, you like it a little bit, right? Uh, just a little bit. So here's three of my bug outs. I couldn't find two of them. No! <laughs> but then I also have my mini barrage. I have a freak. I have a whole bunch of stuff. I'd have to like write it down. Yeah. Really. He's got so many that he can't remember what he actually has. So I have a few, uh, a few knives less than you do in the access lock configuration. I usually carry a CF Elite bug out most of the time. And in the summer, occasionally I will throw in the mini bug out that I have dyed black. So if you haven't seen our how to rit dye scales video, make sure you check that out. So I feel like we're both pretty, uh, pretty confident in our uh, ability to talk about these knives because we carry them a lot, right? Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. if you guys aren't familiar with the Axis Lock, it's been around for a while, but this is kind of the story behind the Axis Lock. So in 1998, Williams and McHenry developed a, this locking mechanism and Benchmade bought the patent and named it the Axis Lock. So it's been around for about 20 years. And how it works is you have what's called an, an omega spring in here, and that tensions this pin. So when you open the blade, that pin will eventually click in over the top of the blade and lock it in place. So it's a you know a reasonably sturdy design, and it is completely ambidextrous, which is also a plus for all you lefties out there. And it's just got that fidget factor. So. Oh my gosh, dude. Uh, if you guys are curious, this is a Benchmade 945 Osborne, so it's the mini version of the 940 as well. So. Let's get into it, shall we? Heck yeah. I'm kind of pumped to see these. So like I said, the patent has expired as of a couple years ago. So here are some takes on the Axis Lock. And I'm going to start off with SOG. And this knife came out a couple years ago at SHOT Show, and I've been crushing on it ever since. So this is the SOG Terminus XR. So the locking mechanism is generally the same. They use kind of this more textured, uh, not round, but rectangular button on here. So it's a little bit different in that regard. You get a little bit more uh, purchase on the button. And it's uh, it's like a glass filled nylon button. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm actually not sure what they. Something like uh, yeah, that. Though. It, it does look like a GFN type button on there. So it's not a metal pin like you would see on right. the Axis Lock, right? So the Terminus XR, really awesome knife. It comes in at seven inches overall. You got a three inch blade. This one is D2. This does come in different variations, so you can get more expensive versions as well. Drop point configuration. These are G10 handles, and it comes in at 3.32 ounces. I really like this knife, and I really like recently they've come out with the LTE versions. So those are full carbon fiber liners and scales on them. Uh, they're just a lot lighter, which is super dope uh, on the Terminus XR Dude, series. I love the Terminus XR. It yeah. is such a good knife. I would, I mean, I, it's going to be very hard for me not to compare everything to the bug out, but it's a good reference point. I know the, uh, people get kind of like, oh, so much about the bug out, but the bug out is kind of the standard measuring point of what I would compare any of the other lock variations to. Yeah, you just kind of have that super light, average size, kind of average design. It's it's just a really good overall overall knife to put in your pocket, right? Right. But I am I love that SOG knife. It's it is a really close rendition. It works very well. Right. 
So it does have a deep carry clip here on the back. So it has a, also a flipper and a thumb stud to open so you can use whatever method you prefer. Cool thing about this, it's $54.95. So you get a D2 blade and a sweet locking mechanism for $54.95. This has got to be one of the better values in a general EDC knife out there. So uh, yeah, that's the Saga Terminus XR. That's pretty good. That's a good size knife. And for that much money to be able to jump in and have an axis lock type, uh, XR yeah. lock, you know, it's cool to be able to try one out at less less money. Right. So SOG's version of uh, that locking mechanism is called the XR lock. So what do you got next? All right. I've got one from Gerber. This is the Gerber Sumo. Sumo. Now they call this lock, which is actually nearly identical to Benchmade's. It's a, a steel pin, both sides ambidextrous, but they call it the pivot lock. This is actually a really cool knife. This thing fits my hands really well. And I'll tell you the best part about this knife. Okay, it's a 3.875 inch blade. So it's almost a four inch blade. G10 handles, it actually feels very much like micarta. And I gotta be honest, this knife is actually really cool. It fits my hand really well. It's definitely a big knife. Oh, it's a, sure. it's a big knife for sure. But I do like that it kind of reminds me of the CRKT Tuna where it's slim, but you get a lot of blade. Mm -hmm. I like that style. And $36.95. I was gonna say, that's the best part about that knife. You can get that lock in something that inexpensive is pretty awesome. I wanna show the fidget factor on this. This one, it's big, but you can totally do it. Yeah, you have a lot of like weight floor forward on the blade, right. so you get a lot of you know snap to it. Heck yeah, exactly. Awesome, so we actually carried some of these knives. So I, I had a knife in my pocket for about two weeks. Kurt had a knife in his pocket for about two weeks. Um, so the knife that I had in my pocket is the Hogue Decca. Now, I will freely admit that I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not. I was kind of a bug out snob before this whole Hogue Decca thing. But after having this in my pocket for a couple of weeks, I think, uh, I think I've changed my mind a little bit. So let's get some specs out of the way. This is the Hogue Decca. It comes in at 7.5 inches overall. You have a 3.25 inch blade. It is 20 CV, which is pretty awesome in a drop point configuration, G10, and it comes in at 2.39 ounces. So not terribly heavy either. This just the mechanism on here is so smooth is it yeah it's i mean it's riding on phosphor bronze washers it is like it came a little bit stiff out of the box but i think that's the case with a lot of these type of oh, know, locking yeah, mechanisms definitely. broken super fast and it is just silky smooth the blade centering is just awesome on it just the function of this specific knife is is just fantastic so hogue did a really awesome job uh, definitely not a heavy user so uh, I can't speak uh, in that area, but if you need it for an office knife and you need to open Amazon packages and break down some boxes, um, <laughs> it works really well for that. So you kind of get this textured G10 over on the uh, on each side of the scales here. The pocket clip is not deep carry, but it is reversible, which is definitely nice. So it kind of sticks with that ambidextrous nature of the OG axis lock. And it comes in at 140.21. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I may be in love. Uh oh. <laughs> but uh, I, I might need to get one of these. I'm not sure. Let me know if I should pick up a Deca. I think the other cool thing about the Deca is that it comes in just a ton of variations. So right. you can get different blade shapes. You can get uh, different handle variations, like that type of thing. So that is the Hogue Deca. I gotta be honest. I don't think I've ever carried a Hogue. You should pick one of these up. This is really good. I'm gonna, yeah, it's just like. Maybe I'll have to play with it. Every, like the size is good. You get awesome blade steel. You get just the action. Everything is just really, really good. So Hogue, way to go with the Deca. I, I'm a fan. So. That's awesome. Okay, so the knife I carried was the James Brand Carter. This is a cool knife. I, you guys know me, I like James Brand. They're a cool brand. They've got great aesthetic. The packaging is exciting to open. Now, I love this knife, but there are a couple things I would change. But let's let's hit the, the details real quick. It's VG10 steel, you've got G10 handles, you have 
an extra deep pocket clip. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting pocket clip. Kind of, kind of a, it's extra deep. We'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. And you have their, they call it the Ambi slider lock. Okay, so I carried this knife for two weeks. Like Jamie said, light use. I mean, I, it's kind of snowy here often, like in the wintertime and it's cold. So I'm not outside like chopping trees down with my, the Carter, with your you know what I mean? But it has been a great knife for little slice jobs and things that I do just every day. I like the lock. The lock is great. The mechanism is great. It's nice and kind of contoured. It's a little bit longer than just the pin on the Benchmade, but it's a little bit longer. It's actually really comfortable to use. I could use that switch all day, you know, but I do have a couple things that I wish were different about the knife. I'm not a crazy fan of the thumb disc, especially this one. It's just really smooth. Um, we'll get a close up of that, but I've noticed as I've been fidgeting with it every once in a while, my thumb will, my thumb will slip. You really have to get behind the disc to get it going. Also, I like the deep carry pocket clip. It's nice and wide. It's definitely my style, but it does stick off the G10 scale quite a bit. And I did, I felt like it was catching my hand or I'd rub it up against the wall or whatever, a little, a little much. But as far as a great knife with the access lock, the James Brand Carter is awesome. And I think it's better than your Hogue Decca. Um, you know, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Well, I, I'm going to have to disagree to disagree. Well, I'm pretty sure that this is just an overall way better knife than your knife. Uh... Where'd he go? Oh, you going down, partner? Hey, town ain't big enough for the two of us. Ten. Woo! I win. You lose. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo! <sighs> well, I guess that settles it. I guess it does. All right. Okay. So let's move on a little bit. These next set of knives, I think we've got three left. So they're not quite completely analogous to an access lock, but they function similarly in how you operate them with your hand. So this next one I have is actually by Wii. And this is a this is an interesting one. This is the Wii Double Helix. And it's kind of got that same type of function where you have you know pins on both sides and you would pull backwards to flick the blade open. Uh, so you kind of have that same motion with your hands, right? To, to open and close it. So this is the Wii Double Helix. It comes in at 7.9 inches overall. It's 3.3 inch blade, S35 VN blade in a drop point configuration and it's 4.55 ounces. So it's a little bit heftier. And this is just kind of like an art knife type thing. Right? Oh, for sure. It's definitely a piece that you want to spend some time looking at. And honestly, I think it's super cool that you have that option. It's premium mat handle material and that just fidgeting with the the lock and watching the spring move at the bottom, it's cool. Yeah, so you can kind of see the whole mechanism from the outside. You've got this coil spring thing here on the back and then I guess it kind of goes up in a bar and then terminates at the pin there. So they call this the slide lock. It's kind of a cool design. Uh, like I said, it's more of a of an art knife type thing, but that's the Wii Double Helix and it's kind of kind of fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, let's see, what do I got? Ooh, I have the Spyderco Manix. Now, this is freaking sweet knife. Yeah. I absolutely love the Manix. Okay, so Manix 2, let's talk specs real quick. S30V steel, we got G10 scales. We have a reversible pocket clip, not deep, but this thing fits my hands really well. It's a classic, like that is a good, just classic, like hard use knife. Oh, heck yeah. Now, let's talk about the lock. Now. This, they, they call it the slide, the slide lock, but it, it's a ball, a ball bearing and a spring. It makes a lot of sense. Basically, it works like a bicycle shock. 
you yeah. know, or a shock on a car. Yep. You compress the spring, the ball comes down, the blade's able to move, and it locks in, and these things are awesome. Yep. Now, the button is a little interesting to me. Uh, I know Flytanium makes a really cool version of their button, and you can replace it with anodized titanium, whatever. This is a, it's just a GFN plastic, uh, but it's really rigid, which I kind of like because my thumb doesn't slide anywhere on the button. When I'm pushing it, it locks. Yeah. And it's a huge knife for a fidget factor. And it's got a good one. Dude, I love that. Every, I mean, I feel like everybody loves the Maddox too. It's just kind of a staple in the Spyderco line. So like, you know what it is. It's been around for a while. Heck yeah, 155 bucks. Uh, kind of going the polar opposite of, ni of a knife you might not have heard of. Um, this showed up at SHOT Show probably four years ago now. Um, and it took a little while for them to get this mechanism out. But this is the Steel Wheel Mini Tasso and the locking mechanism we're, we're talking about here is the ant lock. So this one is maybe one of the farthest departures from the axis lock on the table. This uh, has a little bit of a button on both sides that you push more up than kind of pull back. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a back lock where you actuate this button and it pushes up a bar on the back and then it unlocks the knife. Uh, I think a thing about this particular lock is just how it's not, it's smooth. It's, it's not, it right. doesn't have like that fidget factor that a lot of these knives has, but it's very... I guess the word I would use would be like hydraulic almost. So it's got that very like nice resistant, smooth but it, and buttery, yeah, fluid resistant. Yeah. It's it's really nice. So this is a steel wheel mini tasso. It comes in at seven point two five inches overall, three inch blade, M three ninety blade, in a drop point configuration. These this has G ten handles on both sides with this kind of cool back spacer, and it comes in at two point nine one ounces. Uh, the pocket clip is not deep carry, um, and it is also not reversible. Which is a little bit of a bummer because I feel like this lock is meant to be a little bit more ambidextrous, right? Oh, definitely. So that if you're a left-handed, that might not be for you. But uh, for all you right-handed people out there, check out the Tasso with the ant lock on it. This is a uh, this is definitely a cool one. The ant lock is interesting. I I keep feeling every time I play with it that I almost have to use two hands. But I I think if I actually spent a day of using it you get so used to that ant lock. Yeah. As with a lot of these, it's just, it involves a little bit of practice with any new knife, right? Right. This one's, this one's really cool. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it's been a long time coming from Steel Wheel, but maybe a, maybe a knife that you haven't seen or uh, haven't seen a lot of over the past few years, but. Dude, we did it. We did it. So Nailed it. I'm curious, are you gonna start poking at some of these other axis lock variations, uh, carrying wise? Uh, hmm. I'll tell you which ones I do like. I like the SOG Terminus. The XR lock is awesome. I think Gerber has done a really good job at mimicking Benchmade's axis lock and it works pretty darn good. I also like the Manix, but I don't know if I'd carry the Sumo or the Manix. I would love to carry the Carter, but I would probably go with the, the SOG, yeah. the Terminus X. You know, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of on the left hand side of my table here. Like I I was really surprised with the Deca. Like it's just really really good. And then I've I've also always been a fan of the XR, the Termin well the XR lock, but also the Terminus XR as well. Especially the new LTE versions, which have just arrived. I think they're on the site now. Check the description. Um, I'm not sure, but I think these two are definitely where it's at for me. The, yeah, the Deca and the Terminus XR. Although I will say. The OG is pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. I, it's gonna be hard to to replace the uh, the bug out for me. It's just been so good for so long. I mean, I I ended up getting an original blue one way back in the day, and then I've just kind of progressed through the line. So. Right. I think it's cool that Benchmade held it for so long because they made it a lock that everybody wanted. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted an access lock, and it's cool now to see other brands saying, "Heck yeah, yeah. we're jumping on that." Love it's a it. good lock. Good mm -hmm. lock. Awesome. Kurt, we did it. Thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on camera. Heck yeah, man. Thank you. So thanks guys for watching. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next one.
Hey, you made it to the end screen. If you're not already subscribed to Blade HQ's YouTube channel, hit that button right over there. If you wanna check out some of the knives that were featured in this video, head on over to bladehq.com. And down below, there's our new 2021 product playlist. We'll see you in the next one. It's fun, we're having fun. <laughs> Too much fun. It's fun. <laughs> Kurt, shut up.